start this off uh, with a simple video of headlines from E and E News, and they have aggregated these headlines from the original site and the original stories uh, in one place, and so it's convenient for everybody to use that site. In my opinion, it's the best site. Period. An estimate 276 quadrillion. A quadrillion is a thousand million million becquels, which is disintegrations of cesium-137 entering the Fukushima basements. That's quite the headline, okay? That's April of 29, 2013. April of 29, 2011, there was 76 trillion becquels of plutonium-239 released from the Fukushima. This is just a report. And that's 23,000 times higher than previously announced. 23,000, that's Neptunian went from 239 converted to plutonium 239. On October 26, 2013, a physician says an interesting fact for the West Coast in new UN reports, 95% of the Fukushima discharge is transported in the Pacific. Water with nuclear fuel has been reported coming up from the ocean floor off the Fukushima coastline August 26, 2013. 156 quadrillion becquels of cesium-137. The total fallout for every atomic bomb test in history seeping into the ocean, out of the ocean floor, I should say. 220 million becquels per liter of cesium in the number two spent fuel. That's on uh, August the 28, 2011. 220 million becquels per liter. So on August the 26, 2011, it was 300,000 plus becquels per square meter of radioactive iodine, radioactive iodine deposited in areas near Tokyo before the end of March. So within two weeks, 300,000 becquels per cubic meter, a nuclear worker, generally acceptable limits are around five. That's without zeros, okay, versus 300,000. On November 17, 2011, absorbed radiation doses of iodine-132 was 10 times higher than the iodine-131. Now the iodine-131 has a half-life of about seven and a half days. Plus, iodine-132 is nine times more effective at radiating, irradiating the thyroid glands. Um, on December 3rd, 2013, all-time high radiation levels in the wells of Fukushima plant 40 meters from the Pacific, 1.1 billion becquels of strontium-90. 1.1 million becquels per cubic meter of strontium-90 and other beta-emitters. And, of course, they fear the highly contaminated waters leaking into the ground and flowing into the sea. That's 36,000 times permissible level in water. There is no safe level, but what they have is a p permissible level. An area with 10,000 becquels per square meter of radioactivity is considered highly contaminated by a study over 30,000 square kilometers in Japan exceeds the level. That's 8% of the nation itself. A government simulation shows radioactive plumes of Krypton 85 over Tokyo on March the 15th, and reactor number three with MOX fuel exploded the day before on March the 14th. Krypton 85, folks, that's from the rods, the Zirconian on the rods burning off. Colombian medical professor inhaling just one radioactive hot particle can cause cancer. Now, there's a link below to the buckyballs, which is a result of spraying salt water on the nuclear fuel. And what happens, the sulfur creates a structure, and there's a link below for that. The sulfur creates a structure that uh, accepts uranium, strontium, plutonium, cesium in the center and turns it into a nuclear engine. And so they're the same things as hot particle, but they're much worse than the typical hot particle. These structures uh, do not salute in the water. 
they're carried like dust in your house. You know how dust sits in the sunlight. So it has like a neutral buoyancy in our environment so it can float forever right around the planet. And of course, it's so small, they're one ten thousand of a millionth of a meter. That's how small they are. So it's easy to ingest it. That's way smaller than your DNA, okay? A congressman has released redacted documents to say parts of Unit 2, or Unit 2 got so hot it may be outside of the reactor pressure vessel. That was on April 6, 2011, folks. April 6, just a couple of weeks later, they were already confirming that the cores had gone through, yet they're still trying to deny that today. And on August 28, 2013, uh, cracked floors in the Fukushima reactor are leaking into the groundwater. And that's rising and rising and rising due to TEPCO's wall and can no longer be stopped from getting in the ocean. But it turns the whole earth around that site into mushland. So, so the ground becomes liquid liquefaction, I guess, I think is the name for that. Damaged fuel rods are cracked and releasing radioactive gases in Fukushima's unit uh, four pool. Now that was November 14, 2013. Other assemblies are bent. So if they're bent, they're releasing gases every time you shake it. It releases gases that could cause a massive explosion and that will kill you. You have to evacuate and they have to try to pump those gases out of the building before they can get back in there. It's frightening. A doctor on April 6, 2011, Fukushima effects may be worse than those suffered in Chernobyl. Anti-radiation herbs like tumeri can help. Now, I've been telling you about that all along, right? So that was an interesting article. But turmeric has 700 peer review academic studies about it, how good it is. Experts are assuming Unit 2 on July 24, 2012 had cracked its containment vessel that allowed releases directly from the melted nuclear core and the radioactive plume was blown south. They have a video for that. But you got to realize this also goes up into the atmosphere, goes up into the death streams and comes across the Pacific in about three days. Former Department of Energy official criticized a UC, a UC Berkeley professor for comparing ingestion of radioactive iodine to air travel, right? So air travel has nothing to do with the radiation we talk about. That's indigenous radiation. Now, if you're flying through the death plumes, that's different again. But a typical airplane or walking down the street or bananas or or rocks, or anything like that, background radiation that's been on this planet till the, since the end of beginning of time has nothing to do with the radiation that we're talking about. They're completely different. One's indigenous to Earth, and the other thousands, uh, there is no way to contain them, and they're so deadly, it's a guaranteed cancer just ingesting one of these particles. The French government says 15 main incidents of radioactive leaks at Fukushima only... 408 million billion becquels of iodine released into the air. Only 408 million billion becquels. And they claim that the cesium is at the one... Once again, cesium, cesium, they love that word. Forget about the plutonium, forget about the strontium, forget about the uranium, forget about all their family trees and all their disintegrations and all their manifestations of changing... Uh, to other radioactive isotopes. Forget about all that. They always just want to concentrate on the cesium. But we do have a lot of these headlines uh, with other stuff, thank goodness. And that's why I'm doing the video. So over 4 million becquels per cubic meter in a major city. Uh, workers only allowed around 5 becquels in a year. So imagine what 4 million per cubic meter in a major city. It's frightening. So EU had funded research, Fukushima's atmosphere release of 210 quadrillion, which is a thousand a million million, becquels, once again, of cesium-137, forget about strontium, the plutonium, the uranium, is used as the upper bounds in the simulation. And they claim Chernobyl, which was one-third of any of the reactor's size. It was only a 30% meltdown, where these reactors are 100% meltdown. So that's an outright lie. It's, it's many times higher than the 210 quadrillion. It's millions of quadrillions with an R, folks. That's a thousand million millions. It's a million thousand million millions is the better way to look at that. 
Fukushima released 100 quadrillion becquerels in the Celsius into the atmosphere in just one day. And it was April 29, 2013. And on... July the 18th, 2012, people inhaled up to 85,000 becquerels of radioactivity in just four hours, including iodine-131, of course, 132. There was uranium, plutonium, the strontiums, and all their family trees, you know, and then you had the, the, the MOX fuel is two million times from Unit 3. We'll just keep going here. Fukushima with radioactivity over 40 billion becquerels per kilogram. Now, that was found 400 kilometers away in Tokyo, so that would mean 40 billion becquerels a kilogram material is all the way from Tokyo to Fukushima's prefecture. All the way in between is going to be these massive, unbelievable hot particles. The whole country is polluted, the entire country, the entire planet. Government simulation shows radioactive plumes of Krypton-85 over Tokyo on March the 15th. That's uh, four days later from Reactor 3 with the MOX, which is two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. So it's like two million melted reactors, but it's worse than that. And Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. It's one-third the size. It's different fuel. It was graphite. It had nothing to do with this kind of fuel we're talking about. But nevertheless, that would make it around 18 million times worse than Chernobyl. 18 million times. See, they don't want to put those numbers out there, but they are the real numbers. Gunnarsson said all of Japan is contaminated, and everybody agrees with him on December the 16th, just a week ago. Well, just a few days ago. The epidemic is just beginning. The people are dying all over Japan, and they're hiding, they're skewing, they're uh, mislabeling it, and they're not telling people. High contamination levels yet in the seawater off the Fukushima plant, 3,800 becquels per liter of tritium. 3,800 so if you drink that, all your tea will fall out in a matter of moments. Not only that, you won't uh, be alive to know that when you hit the ground a few seconds later. It's mad what they're doing to our planet, what they've done to our planet, what they've done to every race on this planet, every life on this planet. Hospital says 40% of the Fukushima visitors show internal exposure to radiation, 40% of the people going to the hospital, has internal radiation exposure. Serious internal radiation exposure, folks. And that was on uh, June the 2nd, 2011, 40%. So what's it like now, 100%? Because that was 2011. That was three months after, not even three months after. And then again, December the 18th, yesterday, the IAEA... There was a leak, not for distribution. Molten core is suspected to have to penetrate the Fukushima containment vessel. Um, now, we got lots of reports of that already, but that, that was an interesting one that the IEA had postulated that but never bothered telling, any, telling us, which is the story we hear over and over and over. And then on June the 2nd, the IAEA admitted there was no such thing as a safe level of radiation. See, because this radiation got nothing to do with bananas. It's got nothing to do with the background radiation of potatoes. It's got nothing to do with the background radiation, radiation of sunshine. These are totally different radiations. These will kill you so fast. Uh, we're, we're, everything on the planet is acclimated to the sun. Everything on the planet is acclimated to the background indigenous radiation. These are not man-made isotopes. But the ones we're talking about are. And the Independent had wrote, Why Fukushima is worse than Chernobyl? The truth is coming out 72,000 times worse than Hiroshima. 72,000 times worse than Hiroshima. 72,000 Hiroshima bombs. That's what they're saying. 72,000. Wrap your mind around that. Up to 93 billion becquels a day may be still leaking into the Pacific. That was March the 15th. 93 billion disintegrations a second, all day, every day, still leaking into the Pacific from the Fukushima. Unbelievable. 100 becquels a liter, 44% of the seawater in that harbor. See, this, this is the laws you got to watch out for. Just endless laws where they say the water in the harbor just stays there. That's impossible, okay? As a diver commercial diver for 14 years, I can assure you that's not 
That doesn't happen. Water cannot stay in your harbor. There's the ebb and flow every six hours. It's crazy that the people will even write that stuff. Japan Times. Fear marine life is being wiped out by nuclear material flowing, which it is. The experts warn of festering radioactive sores. Gee, I wonder what they mean by that. Japan Times, on March 8, 2013, the walls are cracked below ground of Fukushima's reactor's building, as if the damage above ground isn't enough to worry about. Oh, well, that was the earthquake that picked it up, and the pictures below, in the link below, you can download uh, 2,146 of them, 1.64 gigabytes of these pictures, and they're in packages of 10, 15, 20 pictures in a zip file. And what you got to remember is that uh, the damage is complete. Fukushima is dead in the water, period. And so is the water. On August the 2nd, 2013, a huge amount of radioactive tritium has been entering the ocean from Fukushima plant. Up to 40 trillion Beckwolves claim TEPCO. They don't include the maze numbers. 40 trillion beckles of tritium. Well, at least they're not talking about cesium, but the next ones are. An estimate 60 billion beckles of cesium-137, strontium-90. That's a great number. We like that one. See, they don't talk about that stuff very often, even though everybody understands it in the academic communities. They're being discharged daily into the Pacific from the ditches at the north end of the reactors. From ditches! Open trenches. 60 billion Beckwells of cesium-137 and strontium-90 every day. Uh, new breaches at the Fukushima flowing in the Pacific New York Times is most likely radioactive particles scattered underground, possibly by explosion. Gee, you don't suppose? That was October 21st, 2013. And their LA Times, 60 billion Beckwells going directly into the ocean every day. 60 billion. 60 billion. If they spread that over your community, you couldn't live in your community just that one day, ever, till the end of time. Land under Fukushima reactor buildings at risk of turning into liquids, because the, the stuff is flowing up. The earth was fractured. The ocean flowed through all those flak fractures. And every time they have it, it's liquefaction, but every time they have an earthquake, it's much more worse again for that site, see? And they have many earthquakes every year. On October 15, 2011, there was a leaked TEPCO report, 120 billion Beckwells of plutonium, 7.6 trillion Beckwells of neptunium released in the first 100 hours. 100 hours, 120 billion Beckwells of plutonium, 7.6 trillion Beckwells of neptunium. That's insanity. That's insanity. Just one day of that stuff is insanity. That was 100 hours, the first 100 hours or something. It's madness. Local newspaper editor Blast, the UC professor for radiation comment. Once again, a UC professor had equated uh, the radiation from Fukushima with airplane radiation, banana radiation, potato radiation, which, which was just indigenous radiation. You can eat bananas all day, nonstop, and they'll never give you cancer. But if you eat one banana with that kind of radiation from Fukushima, your teeth will fall out before you finish that banana. The military units severely were con severely contaminated at the Fukushima. This was back on March the 15th, 2013. The story came out. They couldn't stand alongside of each other. They couldn't. St the soldiers, if you stood alongside of each other, they were so radioactive. But they would contaminate everything around them. So they couldn't go anywhere because they're so contaminated. They ingested so much. There was a mysterious black substance reporter repeatedly and this one is February 16, 2012, and seen all over Minami uh, Suma. One million Beckwells per kilogram. So all the way from there to Fukushima and beyond has this these black substances. But that whole city is covered in it. It's unbelievable. Mysterious reddish uh, radioactive, that was made of Fort. 2012 substance detected 180 kilometers from Fukushima. So, so all the way from... 80 kilometers back to Fukushima, these alpha particles at 200 counts per minute. It's inconceivable anybody's living there. Outrageous. 
Nearly 500, I'm sorry, 5,000 nuclear plant workers are suffering internal radiation exposure after visiting Fukushima. 5,000. This was on May the 22nd, 2011. 5,000 people had ingested huge doses of um, radioactive air into their body, into their lungs, breathed it in, and um, they're suffering internal radiation exposure. Suffering. That's the key word there. Suffering internal radiation exposure. 5,000. Yet they say, oh, there's no injuries, no deaths. Um, uh, Nisa mentions Neptunians 239 in August uh, 2011 conference. Uh, it, it decays into plutonium 239, so 10 to the power of 17, 20 million becquels, disintegrations per second. It's mad. It's mad math, you know, all of this stuff. And that's why I'm doing this particular video. I was, my video broke up so bad last night, you know, after 50 streams, and then my video wouldn't end even after I turned off the computer or disconnected everything, my video still streamed on. It was like they didn't want that video, which is the video you're watching now on the Internet. So now it's coming up with pictures. See how they like that one. The U.S. West Coast to be hard hit by Fukushima's ocean contamination. North Pacific... Uh, Currents will be transporting the radioactive, radioactive material, sh and it comes right across the ocean, smack, slams right into uh, Canada, United States, Mexico, just destroys the ocean, the habitat, the breeding grounds, the continental shelves, the coastlines, the indigenous faunas, the floras. It's really bad, folks, what they have done to us, and they, they're, not, they're not getting away with this. The NRC chairman back in October uh, 27, 2011, says the core is on the floor. It's 9,000 degrees. It ain't going to sit on the floor, okay? But nevertheless, this is what they're saying. It's out of the containment vessel. It's possible the severely damaged nuclear, melted nuclear fuel has uh, migrated. What a nice word, migrated. Idiots. Outside the reactor vessel. I hate those words like that, where they try to marginalize it. Who do they think they are? An estimated 276 quadrillion, with an R, that's an R, it's a thousand million million, Beckwells of cesium-137. Now this stuff, this is, uh, they keep doing that, the cesium-137. You really got to watch out for that, because you also got to take, when you hear those numbers, you got to take into consideration of the plutonium and the strontium and the uranium, blah, 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 and the weaponized uh, industrial military complexes, isotopes that we don't know nothing about. They're locked up, and there's thousands of them. That's how they got the MOX fuel in Unit 3, so toxic is using these concoctions. Once again, you don't need all these isotopes to make power. You need all these isotopes to make exotic weapons and to solve mathematical equations. That's all it's about, destroying the planet for an equation. Uh, this was an update for February 17, 2012. Original mystery black substance was never tested. Much more radioactive than officials' black dust. And detectors showed 98,000, I'm sorry, 95,880 counts per minute. That's up to 60,000 counts per minute in beta and new alphas. Woohoo! See, they just don't want this put together in a collective like we got here right now. Original mystery, because you can see the numbers. If you add all these numbers up, it's, it's, it'll leave you shaking. Over 15 quadrillion Beckwells, a radioactive substance suspected in the trench that TEPCO now emits is leaking into the groundwater at Fukushima. Oh, how kind of them. Not that we need you to tell us that, but we understand because you lie so much. 15 quadrillion, 15,000 million million disintegrations per second of radioactive substances. At least I never said the cesium-137 again because I'm so sick of that number. That's got nothing to do with the numbers, dear. Who cares about something like cesium-137 when you got plutonium and uranium, dear, with a half a billion, I'm sorry, with 4.5 billion half-life. What a stupid, stupid shit this stuff is. It's just destroying everything on this planet. Over 1,000 nuclear workers have internal radiation of 10,000 counts per minute. They're nuclear waste, see? These people got to go to a nuclear waste graveyard when they die in the near future if they're not already dead.
1,000 nuclear workers. That was May the 23rd, 2011. But oh no, nobody got hurt. Everything's fine. We just need uh, secrecy law so no one can tell their stories, see? That's what Japan done. These are murderers. These people are murderers. Japan culture has murdered all life on this planet. Every animal, every insect, everything in the oceans. It's unbelievable. Study shows Fukushima nuclear pollution becoming more concentrated as it approaches the U.S. west coast. More concentrated as it approaches the coastline. The plumes are crossing the ocean in nearly a straight line towards North America. Man, and so the dispersal models and everything that goes with that. That was August the 20th, 2013. Radioactive particles from Fukushima, like poison gas, except it's going to kill you in a few years. See, these hot particles, these buckyballs, they're not going to take 20 years to form cancers, okay? These counts are so high in your body, if you're exposed to that stuff, um, there is no escape from a sure death from that. And it's not going to take uh, two or three or four or five years. Uh, that's what actually what it's going to take at best, rather. It's not going to take the 20 or 30 years that people say cancers. This is different, see? You can't get away from this. You can't solve these equations when they're in your body. Radiation at reactor number one skyrocketed on May 23rd, 2001. Over 200 sieves. Now, if you get 25 sieverts, uh, then you'll die in two weeks. So what's 200 going to do to you? Radiation in Fukushima's groundwa groundwater skyrocketed 3,500 times over the weekend, just five meters from the Pacific Ocean. That was two days ago. 3,500 times. And so we don't even know uh, off the top of my head what the original numbers was, but whatever it was, it's times 3,500. 63,000 Beckwells a liter, basically. 63,000 Beckwells, disintegrations per second in a liter. Imagine drinking that stuff. Well, you'll never know because you'll drop dead before you even lay the glass back down. It's frightening what's going on, and then the media is ignoring it. No one's trying to solve it. We have a society where we have at least a chance to try, but we're not even going to get a chance to try. And so... Radiation skyrockets to 100 sievers an hour. Once again, 25 will kill you in two weeks' time. You'll die two weeks after a dose of that. And no one will know why. You won't even understand because you don't understand and you were walking down the road and you went past this stuff and you got that dose. See, you'll never know about it. You'll just know you're really sick. You have to liquidate your assets to stay alive for a little tiny while, but then you'll die regardless. You just can't get away from it. This was uh, December 13th, 2013, just a week ago. Most don't know, but Reactor 1 melted down in five hours. Uh, it only took you almost three years to tell the truth on that one. It's unbelievable, folks. And then Reactor 3 melted earlier than reported. Canadian nuclear expert. Reactor is releasing 200 trillion becquels, a trillion tritium every year becomes a part of your body and all living things and it gives off the beta particles that produces the damage that can result in cancer. Gee, 200 trillion. See these numbers, right? Endless numbers. You won't hear Fox. You won't hear CNN. You won't hear BBC. You won't hear any of them talking about these numbers in context. On August, August the 29, 2011, 76 trillion becquels of plutonium-239 released from Fukushima. That's 23,000 times higher. Once again, I covered that twice. I know 23,000 times higher than previously announced. And that turned uh, from Neptunium-239 to plutonium-239, right? That's how the conversion works. So then, it, And once it changes from there, it changes to another radioactive isotope. And then it'll change, disintegrate to another radioactive, what they call disintegration for some reason, like it's going to go away. Um, they're just endless lawyers, endless bullshitters, endless manipulators. None of them stood up for planet Earth. Not one of them. All of them wanted a job. All of them wanted a pension. All of them wanted to be published. All of them sold their souls to take your soul and destroy it, to take everything you ever fought for destroy your countries, your sovereignty, 
These people are monsters. 100% monsters. All nuclear scientists are friggin' monsters. Every fucking one of them. I fucking hate every one of them after reading all this here this morning. 31 minutes in and I'm screaming in my own head here right now. It's unbelievable. The numbers are unbelievable. Fucking monsters. I'm sorry. Router obtained secret Tokyo evacuation scenario. Fukushima reactors fail to spent fuel rods melt and mix with concrete and fall into the building. Let's keep going. I just hate their guts because of the numbers I got here. When you add these numbers up, it's just the most frightening thing imaginable. And the fuckers out there, right, Harvard and Yale and Berkeley and MIT and Stanford, Oxford, the Commonwealth, all these nuclear scientists, professors, they're owned by the lobbyists. These are the traitors to humanity. These are the very destruction of Earth, every friggin' one of these people, because all they do is lie and try to hide this so they can keep their job and keep their pension. They're truly 100% monsters. That's the only thing you can destroy describe a nuclear physicist and professors as monsters, period. Scientists, average person in Seattle breeds in 10 hot particles, radioactive particles a day, every fucking day. But hey, no, no worry. Media comes in and says, don't worry, but here's the scientists telling you, warning you, because they got no choice. And then all the media and all the other scientists don't pick up and stand behind them. I'm not saying all scientists are bad, because they didn't know, see, but now they know, now they're afraid to speak out. And so, yeah, they're monsters. I think they're all monsters, in my opinion, anyway. June the 5th, 2011, 10 hot radioactive particles a day. I'm going to say that again. 10 hot radioactive particles every fucking day of April 2011. People in Seattle, people in British Columbia, Canada, people in California, people on the entire coastline, North America. Fucking makes me sick. Just makes me sick here right now. I'm sick to my guts. I'm literally physically sick to my guts seeing what I'm looking at here. 10 hot radioactive particles a day. The children are walking to school. You know, people out shopping, the mail, mailmen. Um, everybody that steps out their door and leaves their window open or door open or has air exchangers or just trying to breed air. No, I mean, these people ultimately, they, de they destroyed Earth so they can have their paycheck every fucking week. Destroyed Earth so they can have a paycheck. Destroyed Earth so they can have wear a suit and a tie. Destroyed Earth so they can have a little office in a shitty, crappy, stupid environment where they continue to destroy Earth. Scientists are literally the most sickest, demented, perverted people on the planet. They're worse than murderers. They're worse than rapists. They're worse than mass killers because they kill every form of life on the planet this stuff. It's endless. Fuckers. Strength of cesium-137 on the west coast to be highest 4%. 4 percent. 4 fucking percent. And no one's trying to fix it. See? 